Hey guys, it's been a while since I uh, last made a video, so let's just jump again into existence. Um, now, there's a particular claim by a guy called Timothy Williamson, which um, is about a necessary existence claim, which I'm going to be addressing in this video. So let me just get you acquainted with some of the issues that are involved before I jump into this. Um, Okay, I'm going to be talking about existence, of course, uh, but the necessary bit is also important. Uh, we discuss modal logic and uh, modality across possible existences. So, let's say, either theoretically or really, there exists different possible worlds. That is to say that some things could have been different. For example, um, John McCain could have won the elections. That seems like it's possible. So we can talk about the fact that there is another possible world, whether it really exists or whether it's just a theoretical construct. There is another possible world in which John McCain did win the election, just for an example. Now, that seems it seems like what we would call a contingent fact, a possible and true fact that Obama won, but it's not a necessary fact, that is to say, it's not a logical necessity in the way that um, a circle being round is a logical necessity, so it's a continuum fact. Now, Timothy Williamson wants to say that, he wants to say that him and by virtue through the logic he uses we all necessarily exist. So that's to say that there is no possible world in which we don't exist. And modality can also be kind of substituted for tempor temporal uh, logic, which means that everything that exists now exists at all times, which seems like an absurdity. But his logic did stir up quite quite a lot of arguments and it's obviously one that I want to resist because I want to say that it's possible that your mum didn't meet your dad and you don't exist. Your own, your existence is in the contingent possibility. But anyway, let's just run through Timothy Williamson's argument and see um, where a hole might be found in it. Okay, so let me see. Okay. His argument primarily rests on three claims, which are the following. Necessarily, if I do not exist, then the proposition that I do not exist is true. Seems reasonable enough. Necessarily, if the proposition that I do not exist is true, then the proposition that I don't exist exists. That also seems reasonable enough. The third one I thought was one that I had problems with, it, which is... Necessarily, if the proposition that I do not exist exists, then I exist. Now, we could say that the proposition had an empty reference. For example, we could say um, that in a world where I don't exist, then the proposition that I don't exist um, doesn't refer to anything. But um, I'm not particularly going to explore that here because um, I realised it means asserting things about propositions, which I'm a little unsure of that I want to assert. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it will leave me in a little bit of a metaphysical mess to do with logic if I deny his proposition 3, which is, of course, necessarily if the proposition that I don't exist exists, then I exist. The reason he says this, of course, is because I is... a uh, as a part of the proposition. So if the proposition that um, I think exist exists, then all of its parts also exist. Okay, there is a guy called Rumfit um, who has a paper called Contingent Existence, and what he tries to do in this is uh, accuse Williamson of equivocating over what necessity means. But unfortunately, he kind of reconstructs Williamson's argument in a way that I don't think is very fair. 
So if we're just left with Williamson's three claims, it seems like we're in a bit of a mess, as someone like Pryor would say. It makes gods of us all, and it doesn't really do much for our, our notions for mode of logic. So what I want to say is that um, Williamson doesn't take into account the difference between true inner world and true other world. He does acknowledge the difference, but he kind of glosses over it slightly. We can have a proposition that is true of a world and not true in a world. Um, for example, in a world that I didn't exist, the proposition that Kyle does not exist is true of that world. Um, I think we could all agree on that. But it's not true at that world, because at that world uh, there would be no such reference to Kyle. So there could be no such proposition to begin with. Now what I want to say is that Williamson's uh, third claim commits us to a particular view of propositions. And once we adopt that view, and notice that there is a difference between true of a world and true at a world, um, and we're committed to what uh, his proposition 3 entails, then um, we can make a distinction here. So, proposition 1, which is again the following. Necessarily, if I do not exist, then the proposition that I do not exist is true. This claim, it seems to me, is true of that world. So, necessarily, if I do not exist, then the proposition that I do not exist is true of that world. But it can't be true at that world, because what we're committed to from proposition 3. But proposition 2 on the other hand, is quite the opposite, which is necessarily if the proposition that I do not exist is true, then the proposition that I do not exist exists at that world. So, in conclusion, um, what I want to say about Williamson's necessary existence claims is, although they might seem quite good, um, and a lot of people are still baffled by them, and a lot of people buy into them, the problem is um, the claims one and two rely on different uh, different notions of true in the world and true of that world, and for that reason um, we can find a way out of it. And assuming his logic's not sound, we commit he commits us to a particular view on proposition three, which is then contradicted by the other two premises. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Peace.